how do people trade Forex? Like, cause I, I've traded it earlier before as well. And uh, let me actually talk to you about maybe some issues and you tell me like, how are these resolved? Like, what is the, the, the issue with data that everything's not transparent, that it's all kind of just made up sort of like what the quote price is um, and the, the volume is all different. How does that not affect your trade or how are you able to trade that and that not be an issue? It definitely affects trading. When you can't get a centralized source of price data, you have some discrepancy. So that's a great point. I won't argue that Forex is or is not a bad market. I think it's a great tool for people, especially when they're learning to trade. And there's just one reason for that. When you look at a stock, you'll find gaps. It'll look weird, especially intraday. It's overwhelming to a new trader. Forex is a 24-hour a day, five days per week market. It's open, doesn't have a lot of gaps. It's very technically driven, a lot of people say. You can look at that and learn how to read price action and practice price patterns a lot better, I think, there than in some other markets. So that would be the first reason why it's not a terrible market. I think where Forex has caught people up is that it's a paradox. It makes you think because it's open all the time and you can trade so many sessions and there's so many assets, you should trade everything in, at all times. When the guys who are making money trading Forex are trading it fast, they're in and out, they're bagging profits, they're locking stops. That's my experience. James Bruce, who you just had on the podcast, does exactly that. I know you guys, he said to me after, he goes, Aaron's a good, he's a good oak, but he doesn't like Forex very much. And I said, <laughs> okay, good. I'll be looking forward to talking to him. So I, James has done extremely well and he has a track record to back it up that shows he can trade Forex. So some people can do it. The guys who I think don't do it well are like me, bro. They're in the New York session. They can't wake up and trade London. If they do, they're burnt out trading at two or three in the morning. That makes no sense. So they're kind of stuck in this in-between. And where James really sets himself apart is that he trades lower time frame. A lot of his trades are five minute, one minute, 15 minute. Scalps, he calls them. In and out for one R, just snag and bag. He's the snag and bag king. Everybody gives him shit because he leaves so much money on the table on some of his trades, but he wins consistently. That's the thing. So he still gets his payouts. He still is making money. So it works. So I think those guys on the lower time frame, they can do well in Forex. And then I think the swing guys on the higher time frame, they can do well because we know there are, I mean, Forex is a thing because banks are doing these huge transactions between each other, probably in some sense for legitimate reasons. And then another sense is probably not so legitimate. Like you said, a lot of manipulation and things like that. Either way, that is happening. So those prices are moving. And just to give an easy example of why that price is so weird and why you don't get clear data, from how I understand it, the hierarchy of who is pricing this stuff, it all comes from the main banks. But then it's divvied off into the brokers and things like that. And when it's divvied off into those brokers, they will price it slightly differently based on what they charge or what they're being charged by the person above them in that hierarchy of price. So then when it comes down to us, you could be looking at Owanda's data, but Owanda only has a certain amount of that current pair or a certain amount of units available to purchase or sell. Other brokers have other units. So how are you factoring that data in? Because those units over there can impact overall price. So like you said, it's very hard to do that. So you have to trade a different way. You can't level to it. You're not going to get any level two with a Forex pair. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. That's where you got to be very reliant on just the price action and that's it. I guess indicators maybe. That's it. Exactly. EMAs, simple things like that. Structure. I'm a big structure guy. Like an Asian range high is a great level to trade off of. A yesterday's high, high of week. I'm big on break and retest. I learned from Peter Brandt, diagonal trend lines are the devil is what he tweeted. He was like, <laughs> horizontal, horizontal trend lines are so much better because then you get breaks and retests. You can see price zones so much clearer where those diagonal lines are very subjective. And I took that rule to heart and it's made such a big, big impact for me in a positive way. So I like horizontal zones and I look for a lot of break and retests. You won't really see me trade through a level. It will have to show that that level was broken and being held before I look to use it as like a launch pad to take my trade from. 